Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and more. Today we have a new topic in oral medicine and radiology that is red and white lesions. So these are the lesions which is commonly seen in our oral cavity. It could be a white lesion, it could be a red lesion. So there are various categories in both the categories. Some are precancerous lesions, uh, some are non-cancerous uh, 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 lesions. So basically a uh, white lesion is an abnormal area of oral mucosa which is uh, appearing whiter than the surrounding tissue. Okay, so it appears a little bit more whiter than the adjacent tissues. So why this uh, white lesion is uh, forming or why it looks like a whiter lesion compared to the surrounding uh, mucosa is because of hyperkeratosis that is increased thickness of epidermal covering or it could be due to the imbibation uh, imbibation of fluid and coagulation of fluids and formation of pseudomembrane and there will be a decreased blood supply so all these uh, reasons could ultimately result in a white lesion okay so this is the first one increased thickness of epidermal covering with increased production of keratin so this is a keratin which is supermost or uh, the top layer uh, so there is increased production of keratosis which is known as hyperkeratosis which could be a reason for uh, the appearance as white and the second one is uh, benign thickening of stratum spinosum so we have various layers stratum basal layer, stratum spinosum stratum granular and stratum cornea so the thickening which is seen in uh, stratum spinosum and there will be uh, accumulation of fluid and intra and extra uh, cellular region and there will be formation of pseudomembrane that is the pseudomembrane formation so all these uh, could uh, result in a clinical appearance of a white lesion now red lesion is area of redden mucosa that may be smooth and atrophic looking or may exhibit a granular or a velvety texture so this could be due to reduction in number of epithelial cells and also could be due to the increased vascularization okay so there will be atrophy that is reduction in number of epithelial cells the classification of red and white lesions so we have red and white lesion with uh, precancerous potential then keratotic lesions with no increased potential for cancer variations in structure and appearance of normal oral mucosa non keratotic white lesions and oral candidiasis so leucedema fordyces granules and linea alba they are the normal anatomic structures which is present in the oral cavity which are the variations in structure and in non keratotic white lesions the habitual cheek and lip biting burns uremic stomatitis radiation mucositis coplic spot mucus patch and oral candidiasis oral candidiasis could be classified as acute and chronic and keratotic lesions with no increased potential for cancer they are stomatitis nicotina palati frictional keratosis white spongy nevus psoriasis keratosis follicularis whereas red and white lesions with precancerous potential they are leukoplakia erythroplakia carcinoma in situ uh, palatal changes associated with uh, river smoking osmf lichen planus and discaratosis congenita so this is a classification of red and white lesions and we should study like note reactions they are a family of lesions with different etiology so the reason could be different but they appear as that is a clinical and histologic picture is common so in like note reactions we have lichen planus like note contact reactions graft versus host disease and like note drug eruptions the first one is lichen planus. It is a chronic mucocutaneous uh, disease of unknown cause. This was described by a British physician 
Erasmus Wilson in 1869 because lichen means fungi planus is flat its appearance is like like a flat uh, a flat appearance it is distributed in oral mucosa and uh, the etiopathogenesis could be it is autoimmune disease uh, it could be the changed keratinocyte uh, which uh, presenting as antigen and so it is affecting cd4 and CD8 help, uh, helper cells which ultimately causes basal cell apoptosis. So this magnitude of underlying sub epithelial inflammation determines the types of clinical appearance. So there is a uh, cell apoptosis. So uh, what is happening at the sub epithelial level determines its clinical appearance. So if it is a mild degree of inflammation, it could be due to epithelial uh, hyperkeratosis and severe inflammation there will be partial or complete uh, destruction of epithelium that is atrophy erosion and uh, ulceration so these are the various types of or lichen planus reticular type papillar uh, plaque atrophic erosive or ulcerative and bullous lichen planus so reticular lichen planus it is fine white lines or striae it is known as vicam striae it is uh, seen as a network or circular patterns. You can see the white striae, we can striae here. It is commonly bilaterally on buccal mucosa, sometimes on lips and vermilion border. This is plaque like and this is papule like. This is homogeneous, well demarcated plaque surrounded by striae and may appear as clinically similar to homogeneous oral leukoplakia. And atrophic, that is homogeneous red areas seen in buccal mucosa, palate and gingiva. And most disabling form is fibrin coated ulcers surrounded by a erythematous zone sometimes displaying white stray. This is erosive or ulcerative type. This was plaque and papule type. The cutaneous manifestation is not just seen in oral cavity. It is uh, seen in hands such as pruritic erythematous to uh, violaceous papules seen in uh, trunk and flexure surfaces of arms and legs. Trauma may aggravate the disease, which is known as Kopner phenomena, which is a short note. What is Kopner phenomena, which is the trauma which aggravate the oral lichen planus, which is commonest extra oral mucosal site involved uh, genital mucosa. Okay. And diagnosis uh, is presence of papules or reticular components, which is a striking feature of OLP. It may exist along with plaque-like erythematous or ulcerative lesions and biopsy and histologic examination is required for final diagnosis. So investigation in histopathology, we can see the sore tooth rotepix, sore tooth rotepix, and liquefaction degeneration of, uh, of or necrosis of basal cell layer, eosinophilic band, which is just beneath the basal membrane and dense infiltrate of inflammatory and uh, inflammatory cells such as lymphocytes and macrophages in immunofluorescence it looks like uh, this now we we'll move on to the management treatment strategies uh, are limiting the progression of disease reduce the exacerbation and relieving the symptoms in diagnosis we have history taking examination biopsy and elimination of other other contributing factors alcohol tobacco poor processes poor oral hygiene amalgam restoration medications so if it is non erosive or asymptomatic we need to just follow up if it is erosive or systematic non erosive we need to start the topical steroids if they have the full response we just keep the steroids in regimen and we need to follow up if there is no response, we need to uh, think of systemic uh, steroids and do follow up. If provided that there is no contraindication to use steroids, if contraindication to uh, steroids, we need to think of uh, topical cyclosporin or tracolimus. So, this is a treatment regimen for our lichen planus. So corticosteroids we need to uh, topically use as a gel or mouth rinse two to three times a day for three weeks then 
uh, taper during next nine weeks till a maintenance dose so we need to reduce the doses and two to three times a week is reached okay so maintenance dose of two to three times a week is reached we need to uh, taper the dose systemically used as one milligram per body weight kilogram body weight once a day for one week followed by a reduction of 10 mg uh, in each subsequent day so topical steroids we have on 0 0.5 percent uh, flucinonide gel which is two times a day for two week then clavetazole gel and triamcinolone dexamethasone elixir then topical anti-fungal therapy other topical agents are calcineurin inhibitors such as cyclosporin and tracolimus, retinoids and UV phototherapy. So differential diagnosis, it could be lichenoid contact reactions, drug induced oral lichenoid reaction, GVHD that is uh, graft versus host reaction, discoid lupus erythematosus or bullous membrane pemphigoid. Now we have drug induced lichenoid reactions. They are skin eruptions which occur after ingestion or inhalation of certain chemicals. So they represent a delayed type of hypersensitivity, which is a type 4 hypersensitivity. So pathogenesis, we uh, consume the drugs. So proteins is a haptans which uh, act as antigens and perceived as a foreign uh, objects by the T cells and there will be immune reaction. Okay. So drugs could be penicillin, uh, gold uh, or sulfonamides. So clinical features it uh, resemble as lichen planus, but uh, this drug induced lichenoid reactions are predominantly unilateral. Okay, the other one is bilateral and present with an ulcerative reaction pattern. Management, uh, the first thing is discontinuing the drug and then symptomatic treatment with topical steroids. Lichenoid contact reactions, they are considered as a delayed hypersensitivity reaction to constants derived from dental materials. So all the etiopathogenesis is almost the same as um, a previous uh, lichenoid uh, drug reaction. And it is also resemble oral lichen planus. The clinical difference between oral lichen planus and lichenoid uh, contact reaction is the extension of lesion okay and management is replacing the dental material uh, which will result in cure or improvement in most of the cases and most lesions should be expected to heal within one or two months and we have gvhd that is graft versus host disease is a common complication of allogenic bone marrow transplantation so here what is happening the immune cells in the transplanted marrow recognize the recipient as foreign and mount an immunologic attack it is like an autoimmune so the transplanted marrow will be uh, considered or organized as a foreign foreign material and immunological attack will be there clinical features they are indistinguishable from oral lichen planus but are more widespread in nature skin lesions are present management is topical uh, steroids Flucinonide and clobetazole gel treatment of uh, opportunistic uh, infections uh, like candidiasis and development of secondary malignancy has been recognized as a complication of this. So that is all about uh, red and white lesion. It is just uh, addressing the uh, lichen planus and its uh, lichenoid reactions. Uh, we have various lesions in red and white lesions. So we have seen the classification. So they are they are mm, we have leukoplakia, erythroplakia, uh, OSMF. Uh, leukoplakia, OSMF. Uh, you can find the videos uh, which were uh, uploaded previously. And OSMF lichen planus and leukedema, fordysis, granules, linea alba are the normal anatomic uh, appearance and oral candidiasis also uh, another session is uploaded in the uh, channel so you can uh, go through it so this all comprises red and white lesions not just lichen planus so I just 
covered lichen planus and lichenoid reactions. So I'll come up with a new topic in the industry and more. Thank you.